Okay, welcome to module number two. So we're talking about here are the steps to success. It's not a difficult platform and it's not meant to be because if we can't figure it out, then we can't use it and LinkedIn doesn't have users or advertisers or revenue. So it's designed to be uh, you know, a place that we can go in and set up our business page quite easily and then really run with content from there. However, one thing that's very helpful to know in advance is how to create great content, how to story tell, how to be authentic and accessible and you know authoritative in what you're talking about, but also really human. So we're gonna talk about some of those things, but I encourage you as well to consider your overall marketing strategy here. And if you need to, to seek out some of the other tools or planning calendars or editorial resources that either social school has to offer or plenty of other places on the internet to help you plan great content from video, photography, captions, headlines, articles, copywriting, <laughs> content, scheduling, et cetera. Um, because at the end of the day, we can talk about all the tools and features in the world, but if we don't have great content and remember quality over quantity all day long, even five LinkedIn posts and one article a month would be amazing. Um, maybe a live in there as well. Then, you know, there's no point. We just really need to make sure that what we're doing is giving people something to sink their teeth into that we can be considered a resource for a really great, helpful business. Okay. So I love this quote from CEO Jeff Weiner, where he says, I hope to make cold calling obsolete, or we do, uh, in the same way that we love modern day social marketing or digital marketing here at Social School, because it helps us scale our marketing efforts. We don't have to focus on physical interactions like phone calls and billboards and TV commercials or person to person meetings and, you know, tiresome kind of one on one engagements, not tiresome, they're lovely, but we can't scale. You can't grow a large business or even 100 customers if you only have time to meet with 10. So what we do online and on many of these platforms really can scale and, you know, drive so many more eyeballs and then customers if we're authentically approaching it, like we're talking to one person really, really, um, you know, well. So let's start by building our page. We've got our profile that we've fleshed out and we've given Instagram or LinkedIn what it needs. And now we're heading into that business page environment. So we can go there from within our settings in our personal profile. And then we can start to think about what makes the most sense to feature in our business page. I can access my pages. I have a couple here uh, that I'm admin on from my profile. And of course I'm gonna bookmark this and I'm going to have it in a really neat, well, this is built in, but I can view it as a member so I can see what it would look like if I was Joe Public and I can see this company's um, you know shortcuts I can see the recent videos I can see any kind of posts that they've created um, you know exciting news that they've done or status updates uh, link based posts or reposts etc I can see you know their about page talking in the third person times two, I think here, but um, I can see just sort of the lay of the land, right? Of course, the about statement, who we are and what we do and where to find us. And oh, look at that. There's even a map in there. If we or company X had any jobs, they could post right there. Um, a little bit more about the employees, perhaps that are in the company. Really fun. If you're a job seeker and you're trying to maybe find someone in the company, if you're, if you're hoping to be employed there or learn more or whatever. So you get the idea. There's lots here and I can manage it. Um, I really love that toggle view from back end to front end. That's, that's a, a exclusive feature for LinkedIn at this point, although I'm sure Instagram or Facebook will rip it off pretty soon. So what else have we got? Well, I can edit, of course, the page, and this is where we go in and we want to make dang sure that we've got everything correct. We even get the chance to have that call to action button. Do you want it to be follow, uh, learn more, give, visit website? Yes, please. Um, <laughs> so what do you want people to do when they arrive? visit website and of course follow great or you might feel differently awesome uh, featured groups if you create a group which we looked at in the last module that little button in our waffle there where we can go in and create a group if we feel that's a powerful thing for us to do we're going to talk about why it is um, great I can connect my page to that group hashtags etc of course then I want to make sure that I'm creating great content and this is where we really can shine so one of the neat features here is that 
LinkedIn is giving us plenty of ideas on articles and post ideas and inspirations that we can repurpose into our own or simply share it. So I'm going to go in and I can find like, this is amazing. It's like a, it's like a news conglomerator that is giving us content and we're not in some third party tool or some kind of alerts um, system. So I'm going to say, yep, these are my industries or I can type in whatever else I want in here. And now it's going to serve me up some really um, cool and I can even make it, you know, specific to my location or my country. And I've got some great prompts and this could actually serve as one of my content categories. This is news. This is repurposed, you know, expertise and articles. And we always say in our content classes do not direct people to Forbes.com or the Globe and Mail.com or Harvard Business Review. They don't need more traffic. You do. So best case, you can take these inspirations, go write your own article about it in LinkedIn articles. Where do those exist? Uh, say no more. Um, and then you can direct people to your website where maybe you've posted it as a blog. You've gone back to college 101 and you've taken three quotes or three different sources on you know, the latest uh, trend, fashion trends for fall or um, five reasons to get vaccinated. And you've made it your own and you've inserted your expertise. Now you're actually like a, a, you know, a source, great, enter phone calls from the press and um, you're sending people to your original content or your posts on your website or, you know, in your feed or even better, um, some kind of uh, thing for them to take action on. It's an event to sign up for a webinar, a course to buy, a product to purchase, whatever. Otherwise, no problem. We can definitely post other people's articles to our page as we saw. Let me just not get too ahead of myself here. Um, a few other things here, uh, employee milestones, company news, if we had them, we can go there as well. Um, and then I can see all of my activity. I can do this, of course, for any other page that I'd like to view as well, including um, events, articles, updates, really great stuff. And then the analytics piece is important as well. We can see all sorts of uh, data as to who is visiting our page. We can play around with the time frame and benchmark it maybe separately in a third party tracking tool or just have it as a reference for ourselves. What about creating content? Well, of course we can go in and we can start a post. And there are many ways that we can do this. Um, and they include third party tools and, and software, et cetera. Uh, I'm just going to create a quick post here. Of course, everyone I click on has my face on it. That's not the goal. I can actually make a little um, three part carousel here. And just to, you know, give an example of a, of a post and how easy it is to create. So I can edit my photo, I can edit the alt text, but if I'm done that, I'll move to the next step and I'll just say, you know, um, student love or something. <laughs> it's a really good post. Now, if I wanted to further target this post, amazing. I can do that right here without having to pay to do so. And this is where in our editorial calendars, we know that of those 12 posts I'm creating for LinkedIn every month, which are a little bit different than the Facebook and the Instagram and the YouTube, just repurpose slightly for LinkedIn, but it's okay if they're somewhat similar. You don't have to kill yourself to create, you know, original content across every platform. You can repurpose a little bit and that's wonderful. Um, you can even tee up something that's happening on a Facebook live with a LinkedIn post or vice versa. So I can choose a target audience here. The, the caveat is that I have to have enough followers to do so. So the first thing I'm gonna do is choose my location. And if I just said Canada, because our page, uh, we're just kind of getting going on it. We have, I think 600 and some followers on our page. So there's 550 people that I can target. Great, so it's gonna let me target that post. But if I also wanted to add in an industry and I said marketing, because I wanna target marketers and I say, sure, marketing and advertising, I've now made it too small of an audience, so I can't target that post. The reason being that you can't target audiences without paying for it for, of like 12 people. So that's gonna be something you have to work towards if you do not have a huge follower base yet. And um, likewise, gender, um, age, you have to be a little bit uh, careful, of course. Uh, this is a kind of uh, ethics situation as to how you're targeting people. If you know your audience is mostly female, you can create an ad for females and you can speak the language that you would if you were talking one-to-one -to, -one to an authentic woman in front of you 
and you might speak a little differently to your mom, to a, to a man. I was going to say to your dad, because we do. That's okay. Um, what the platforms are getting away from is discriminatory posts that are only available to a certain age demographic, gender, race, etc., religion. You get the idea. But we still have that ability for now, and um, it can be a really powerful thing. So don't be afraid of it, and it can actually be really helpful to think about these target demographics that we might be targeting um when we are creating our content because this one might be perfect for millennials and this one's actually for your you know your retirees and this one is for whatever sports fans and non-sports fans something like that so really helpful if you are able to target your posts um of course i could have uh posted that live but i did not and uh it would show up in my feed likewise a video to share i can go in um, let's see if I have one that I could quickly do here. If I look at our, uh, oh goodness, um, videos here, these are all quite long. Maybe there'll be one that I can just quickly kind of schedule and post. So this one hopefully would be sized a little bit better. And because I played, or it's a, it's an original video pulled from my desktop, not something I'm reposting from YouTube or Vimeo, um, or Instagram reels or something, if that were possible, uh, it's going to autoplay. And it's going to give my users the brilliant kind of activation um, as they scroll by it and they can choose to have volume on it or not. So this is also kind of quite powerful. Um, and you can go through the steps. I can add a hashtag if I want to and just make it that much more searchable. Don't underestimate the power of hashtags on LinkedIn. If you don't know how to use them, scroll your feet. See how others are using them. Two hashtags is best, not 20. And they're really, really utilized um, quite well. As a, as a search tool for topics, companies, and other things on the platform. Uh, likewise, if I wanted to share a document, maybe I've got something that I am excited about um, sharing with, uh, you know, people from, ah, uh, if I could only just quickly find, I thought I had this ready to go. Oh, here we are, a brand guide. Let's say that I wanted it to be um, the brand guide. If only this was the LinkedIn or the Facebook workbook that you'd be seeing as a PDF right now, um, then it would really be relevant. But instead, I've got this random PDF that I'm loading up here for my followers. And um, it's quite cool because they could literally just like scroll through it right here um, and also be able to download it. So that's kind of neat. And um, something that a lot of a lot of companies lean on. So when I go to their their page, I can see their posts, their articles, their uh, documents, and their events, depending on what they've got. So that's sort of where we where we land on the page. And of course, um, you know, we've got a number of stats that we can see as well as we look through our uh, our own feed. But what we really want to do is spend some time paying attention to what others are doing in their own pages. And more than that, we want to make sure that our page is complete. And that's not just with your settings and your bio and that kind of thing and your a nice banner. Um, it's absolutely with content. You want to be creating consistent, ongoing, educational, insightful, inspiring content that does, like I said, fit into your content plan. If you need support in that and developing your pillars and your categories and your post types and your frequency calendar, that's something that you want to spend some time doing. Okay, so why would people follow a business? Well, there's a number of reasons. And of course, that's, you know, company news and new developments as it relates to something in their industry or their competitor, or maybe just straight up, they love the brand. That's the best reason to follow. If we can get there and we have big enough fans that they want to see what we're up to so they can share and like and comment, great. They're not just following us looking for job opportunities or business opportunities to partner or pitch. Um, and then really importantly, the best thing that we can do is have expertise and insights and knowledge that we're sharing regularly as a page or as a company that people turn to us because they trust us. And they, they believe that we're a source, we're relevant, we're important, and we break through every stat of our modern day world that says trust barometers are, have never been lower. When it comes to academia, government, um, big business and corporations, or um, you know, even the medical community, if we can become a trusted brand and people believe in us and they feel like they belong or they, they get us, or they understand us and they want to align with us, 
they love us, they're loyal to us, uh, we've got something great going on. And if you can think of any companies like that in your fold that have changed your life or that you, you love engaging with them, you know, you can start to understand the kind of content that they would create that would make you feel more of that. So as businesses on LinkedIn, we can take the, pa the passive approach or the proactive approach. And most of us are in that passive realm where we have a profile, we have a page, and we're building some connections or followers or accepting invitations, but we're not really doing a whole lot more than that. Uh, it's wonderful because we're there that's better than nothing. And yes, there's introductions to clients, people can message you, you're, you know, seeing the odd endorsement or recommendation. And, um, and it's working for you to some degree, perhaps proactive LinkedIn marketing, of course, takes it to the next level where we are doing those regular status updates to our page and our personal profile. Um, we're creating value driven sites that posts, I should say that change someone's day or state of mind or, uh, you know, level of knowledge around something even better if we've given them something that they want to share or promote or, or, you know, repost. Um, and, and that's where that deep thought kind of stuff comes in. So LinkedIn is really great for us being able to establish ourselves as industry experts or somewhat knowledgeable in what we do, um, because we've got ability to create long form content here and more deep and meaningful content than, you know, a quick tweet or a hashtag. But if we're going to do that well, we've got to show up human. And you've heard it many times, and it's the theme of almost every year of social school, the most human brand wins. And more than ever because of that trust piece, the eroding trust that we don't feel for companies as much as we used to decades ago, but even just within the last five years, we don't know who to trust other than our friends and our contacts and our colleagues that are telling us we should go try that new restaurant or um, recommending that new AMA membership or whatever it is. So just because we're on LinkedIn, we've got to turn down the robo speak and, you know, find a balance between extremely professional and a little bit too candid. And you'll know it when you see it, just like everything. This is a personal preference. You've got to know your tone and voice and brand value and then post from there, create content from that place. Uh, years ago, when we started seeing business tools come to life on social media, Facebook pages, Instagram business pages, you know, the, uh, the common question that came our way at social school was, well, who should I be on, you know, Twitter versus YouTube versus LinkedIn? And, you know, a, a solid brand is the same no matter where they are. I love the example of Apple or Nike or Starbucks, some of the bigger companies. Apple is Apple, no matter whether you're seeing them as a pop-up store in you know, New York City, or you're opening a brand new iPad box, or you're seeing a Super Bowl ad. The brand runs through it deep, and you know it when you see it because of their tone and look and feel and color and aspirational imagery, et cetera. It's all the pieces of their brand. They might be a little more candid in Instagram stories, no problem, than they are in a LinkedIn article or you know, a, a TV campaign, um, but we still know it to be them. So find your voice, know your brand, what you stand for, and then it's easy to show up in the right, a little bit different in, in different places, just like you would, you know, if you were showing up in real life to a cocktail party versus a conference. So from there, farm the features. Don't ignore them. And I'm going to show you one in particular that is your even bigger opportunity. If, if organic post reach is big, the other one that I'm going to show you is even bigger, but I need you to uh, take all fear away and get brave with me. So we have a lot here that we're offered. And like I said, we don't have to choose them all. So groups and articles to updates and strategic content targeting and beyond. There is so much here. But let's talk about groups for a minute. So you may be a part of some groups over time. You've probably joined, whether it's an alumni group from your university or uh, industry groups related to, you know, your, your uh, realm or expertise that you want to be able to stay up on. Uh, they're a fantastic place to find your niche and show up in that niche. And, and maybe you're showing up as a person and obviously and less so as a business. So you are able to, again, post articles and showcase what you know and, and be, a, be a helpful resource. We're not showing up there to spam or pitch people. No, absolutely not. We are showing up there to be helpful. 
to serve, to give, 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 and then get the referral or get the sale. That is marketing one oh content marketing one oh one today. And groups can be a great place for that. And even more so, much like a Facebook group, it's an exclusive smaller community. And if you can't find one that makes sense for you or your industry, start it, host it, be the source. And even more kind of altruistically or, or affinity building, trust building, is if you were to invite people from other parts of your industry to be a part of it. We've seen this work really well with like a bunch of co-work companies in town that maybe they're competitors, but they know that they'll go further together if they raise the bar of co-working spaces in general or the uh, the small brewers association and they had all these craft breweries that are that are banding together to create great stories create a community and you know obviously leverage themselves or lobby for the things they need to in their industry or or in the hearts and minds of their audiences so don't be afraid of that it can go so so far if you do it well the articles and as I mentioned, uh, not everyone's doing them as, as individuals. This is where we post our articles. But those who are, are doing a fantastic job. Let's just go look at um, Ariana Huffington. There she is. So founder of Huffington Post and now Thrive Global, um, which is a really neat company. So if I was to go into Ariana Huffington's page, um, remember I'm in her personal page here and I can see a couple things that she's got featured. Those are articles. And I can see her um, her, uh, most recent happenings. And one of them here is these articles, which are beautiful. They show up like a really neat kind of news, uh, article. And, um, some of these ones she does as regular features. So let's, let's see this guy. It's, she's got the opportunity. She didn't size this super well, but it could just be my screen, uh, to create a banner image. And then from there, you've got a headline and a sub headline, and it's really pretty. And you can repurpose this. And this is a fantastic piece of organic, original thought leadership content. It could be five things you didn't know. It could be a how-to, um, a did you know, behind the scenes, an interview, an FAQ, anything tight and bright or long-winded, if that's what your people like and want. And then we can have this content that has its own URL, this original linkedin.com url that's going to bring people to your page and to your article that you can now post on facebook or post it on your in your e-newsletter to drive people here and this is where this cyclical repurposing activity happens we like to say that we are flipping on its head the way that we create content and get it out to the world and uh most of us spend 80 percent if not 98 percent of our time strategizing and debilitatingly creating and crafting that perfect content or you know those not so perfect promotional posts and then we just post it and don't think about it and we need to flip that on its head so that in fact 80 percent of our time is spent making sure it gets read and not with money necessarily and advertisements but by repurposing and redirecting and resurfacing and all of those re words so a really neat tool that you can embed photos in headlines subheaders you know all sorts of cool stuff um and this is where people really get quoted quite often and you see these articles show up in the news feed really well so if ariana posts something as an article it's going to be now in her feed and her followers are going to see it so here we are. Um, oh, this is a link from Thrive, her company. Uh, but if she had created an article, that would very easily be posted to her feed if she so chooses to cross post it to her feed, which she probably would. And uh, what a great way to get people reading your stuff. Bill Gates has a, another series of great articles that you may want to check out. And again, just get some inspiration on. Okay, so articles uh really long form deeper content if you want but it doesn't have to be 16,000 words so don't be shy about those it can just be a great place that as soon as your post gets a little long go make it an article uh and uh post it to your feed once it's ready and repost it to your blog if you want to so what are we doing here we are adding value and I challenge you if this is not one of the fundamental goals of your company in general or of your content marketing efforts, because if you're not adding value to my day, when I stop scrolling on whatever feed long enough to read your post or watch your video for four seconds, which I'm giving you my attention for, and then I'm out because I have a goldfish brain like the rest of your audience, 
I need to feel like it did something for me. It wasn't just a waste of my time or advertising content that I'm turning away from. Unfollow, unsubscribe, you know, uh, block. So if we can add value, and that doesn't mean it has to be like packed with stats and research. No, it just has to do something that ideally leads me to feel a little different than I did before. Maybe it even changes my emotional state. Amen. If we can connect with people emotionally, now we've added value like none other. So value-driven content that drives the trust and the leadership and the conversation that we're hoping it will makes us a valuable contributor. And if we show up with those brilliant A words, we're moving way beyond the P's of marketing, product, place, price, promotion. No, we're talking about these really rich words that make people want to do business with us or at least come back for more. And that's the goal. Leave me wanting more. Don't overwhelm me as I'm really good at, um, but compel me, magnetize us to your brand, your company, your thoughts. And even if that's just one person, anytime I feel uh, shy or overwhelmed or like stuck because I'm really good at like, you know, just kind of procrastinating my way into being like paralyzed because I'm a perfectionist, I suppose, among other things, I just go back to thinking about one person. If I can just talk to Mary, Yes, I can talk to Mary. Perfect. And if I talk really well to Mary, because I know exactly who she is. I know what wine she drinks. This is a hypothetical person. I know what she needs. I know what her pain points are, her struggles. I know what her desires are, what she wants to feel like. Because I've mapped this out in my audience persona building stuff in all of our other courses or just on paper. Uh, then I can absolutely speak to her. And when we do that, when we talk authentically to one person, we capture so many more hearts and minds and they can be of a totally different demographic because the authenticity comes through. And so do, so does our, our authority or our, our accessibility, et cetera. So what happens when we can do this and simply, you know, don't overthink this. I'm, I'm painting a, a big picture here, but really all it means is show up, just give it a try try five posts, or I often say in our in blogging courses, if you were to blog 12 times this year, it's probably 12 times more than last year. And that's just once a month. And you can batch write them over each quarter or something, or in a morning. And, uh, and then, you know, watch what happens. So don't overwhelm yourself. We're constantly having to remind ourselves what's sustainable. What can I do now that I'm not going to be so burnt out by in three weeks and start hating? or that I can grow into once I know what's working and what's resonating because I'm paying attention to the analytics and listening. So yes, we can reach people and then we can reach them even more if we do it well or authentically. And this is where thanks to that organic reach opportunity and the lack of content creators and the rich features, we're able to do it really, really well using LinkedIn. So a little bit more about this on-platform reach. So yes, we can reach um, lots of the, the page followers. And then if we boost that content or we share it as a person or our employees share it as their profile to their connections, we've got an even bigger organic reach. We don't have to pay or we can. And we, are, we can look at that in the paid solutions in the final module here. Off platform, we've also got some really valuable reasons to use LinkedIn, and that is increased brand visibility in search. So, you know, if I was to do a, a brand search of something significant like Lululemon, and I'm using a direct keyword search in Google, and, uh, and I see that Lululemon comes up and they own page one, amen, our, all of our goal. So their website and then their blog, maybe if it's or shop.lululemon.com, a subdomain. Um, and then perhaps it's like their uh, Instagram comes up next because it's very popular or their Medium account because they write a lot of articles or their LinkedIn feed. And this is where these additional platforms really help us show up well in search. And, you know, all those other pieces of um, Lululemon's marketing mix are available for us to choose. So there's a lot of ways that we can we can have our LinkedIn page help rise the, the rankings of, of our name in search and also of our parent website as a result because it raises all the boats. Um, and a lot of that comes with just those completing those fields that are open to us in our profile and in our bio and then writing more content using our keywords without sounding like a robot. We're not jamming in our industry terminology or our search terms that we know people are searching for, not what we think they're searching for. Um, but we also are uh, just 
posting consistently and that really, really helps as well. Okay, so next we're gonna look at some of the best in class kind of content and case studies. And um, we're gonna see some of these features in action and I look forward to seeing you there.